I'm here not to sell you anything today. I'm, I'm more or less here to tell you a story about this little boy. This little boy growing up and longing, you know, for the things that the neighbors had. The, 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 the occasional little toy that they would get and all of that. This little boy with two other siblings living in this house not bigger than a kitchen. This, this, this little house, that, that, that was more or less his comfort zone, you know. This little boy with this close family, you know, where everything was just about the joy that the family would bring. Not the material things that every little child wanted to enjoy. This, this is the story of this little boy growing up and every Christmas, you know, tradition well, where, you know, all he really had was new what we called carpet, you know, linoleum, carpet. That's what we had on those curtains, them plastic curtains you put in the door. You know, it is right there and this is, this is what you put out there. That was the joy that little boy knew. And Auntie Martha making some milk punch and, 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 and mommy cooking the ham. That, that, that was like the joy, the only joy, but it was missing something. You know, he wanted a toy. He wanted, he wanted the joy that the neighbors had. He wanted the joy that his, even his cousins had. Unfortunately, he couldn't have afforded it. Mommy said we had to eat. He was happy for the food and grateful, very grateful for that food. But at the time, would have preferred the toy. You know, and this little boy grew up and it took a while for him to actually, you know, have, you know what we used to call a Joe man. Not a Joe man, a Joe man with a parachute. You know, it took a while and, you know, that first toy was, whoa, boy, you have a toy. And he would send it up and send it up and to the point where when the Joe man mash up, you would put your own plastic bag, <laughs> which was a little too heavy. It was a little too heavy, you know. For, um, for it to fly. Apart from that little German, he had to make his own toys. You know, sometimes you're sick, or you know, take a little arm um, stick, put a nail in it with the tin from the milk and roll that. You know, that was your toy. Make a catapult and then that was your toy. But again, you wanted the colorful toys that came from America. You wanted the toys that came from a land you do not know if you would ever visit. That's what that little boy wanted. So this little boy grew up to be a man. That's that little boy right here. Who is this man right now? This, this boy grew and he really wanted to give back. You know, he really wanted to make a point of helping so that another little boy or little girl would not go through what he went through. I got teased a lot. I got teased by even my closest family who, um, who had, and I learned the meaning of hand-me-downs from a family member. A family member who had a little more than me. A family member who was in a position to give me their old toys and their old clothes, which was actually the newest thing that I had or the best thing that I had. But this family member saw it fitting to reproach me and say to me, you using my hand-me-downs, you know, and I didn't want somebody else to suffer that. I wanted somebody else to have theirs so that nobody could look at them and say, this is old stuff. It is about that little boy now. It is about those little boys. It is about those little girls, about the children. It is about me being in a position now and being blessed and feeling blessed. No, I'm not a tycoon. I'm not a millionaire, but I've been blessed. And that's the reason for Project Smile for a Child. It started off a few years ago where I started it off 
with just a measly $500 going around and servicing just about 50 something, 60 children, if anything, if so many, 30, but just going around and doing that, you know. But I know that I wanted to do more. And so I put it out there. The next year, I did a lot more from my pocket and a lot more on the third year. But then, people heard that call. And then, people wanted to help and be part of it. And this is my joy. Not money. It is all worth it when I see those children smile. And I don't call them underprivileged, less fortunate. Underprivileged sounds like this poor, hopeless, nobody wants to help kind of soul, but no, they're just less fortunate because they're much like me. I don't feel that I wasn't loved. So this year, I decided I'm going to take them out of their communities. I'm going to get them on buses. And I'm going to take them down and make them feel like the VIPs that they are. All right? I'm going to take them and make a motorcade and take them to the Grosile Secondary School. And I'm going to make them a Christmas party. It is my dream to be able to touch every single child that can't afford their own smile. It is just about the joy that it brings to me. It is just about the smile that I put on their faces. The smile that is there, but is hidden behind all that sadness. If at least once I can bring out that smile, it would be during Christmas. So Smile for a Child takes place every year during this season. Smile for a Child. 2015 to be continued until forever. I thank you.